WrestleMania goes Hollywood. Let's be thankful that they're not owned by the Walt Disney Company and move on. Battle of the Tag Team Champions. If Rey Mysterio and Eddie Guerrero were able to do this, then why didn't future tag team champions go against each other at WrestleMania when they got no challengers? Champions will go one on one with each other. Because why the fuck not, am I right? If I'm being honest, Rey Mysterio's theme doesn't match with his entrance due to the fact that he's not jumping out of the sky like he normally does. Up by Ed, oh. nice and kicking things off with a center mover for that perfect landing on the feet by Rey, starting off pretty good. Mirror irony. And Eddie's proud of himself. Well, why wouldn't Eddie be proud of himself? He's in control and is on the offense against Rey. If that doesn't make one proud, then why are they even wrestling? Well, at WrestleMania big time. Taz just foreshadowed the tagline of the next year's WrestleMania event in Chicago. What's next? Someone's gonna reference someone being all grown up at WrestleMania 22 to foreshadow the 23rd WrestleMania's tagline? Ray spends 25% of this match adjusting his mask. Those latches are easily detachable. Ray tapped with both his hands, yet the referee never called for the submission. Simply amazing. These are the three vertical suplexes. Because there's totally such a thing as a horizontal suplex. How the hell would that work anyway? I'd like to know. How does one get frustrated? What does frustrated mean? The entire time Eddie is pinning Ray, his arm is underneath Ray's left shoulder, and thus it's off the mat. So this pin should not count at all. I call bullshit on this because Ray's leg was underneath Eddie's shoulder the whole time. Eddie got screwed in this final WrestleMania match. For a World Heavyweight Championship match! Really? First ever Money in the Bank ladder match and the winner only gets a title shot against the World Heavyweight Champion? So how was Edge cashing in on John Cena and the WWE Championship that follow in January legal if this was the case? the success of WrestleMania 20! If Chris Benoit's intention was to repeat his success of WrestleMania 20, then shouldn't he be competing for the World Heavyweight Championship against Triple H tonight instead of being in this ladder match? Alright Tyson, be sure to guide me to the ring because I can't see shit with this hood covered in my face. Howard Finkel announced Edge hailing from Toronto but forgot to announce the same thing for Christian one minute ago. Howard is a dick to Christian. No ladders were harmed during the making of this entrance. Oh wait, Kane just committed ladder side. Fire and brimstone awaiting! Pre-match assault. Also, why did Edge think that going after Kane during his entrance would be a good idea? You'll just get your ass whooped doing that, dude. Poor strategy. Alright, by now everybody is brawling, so why hasn't the referee rang the bell yet? This match has no disqualifications or countouts, so why do we have to wait until they're in the ring before we can officially start? Retrieve the breeze briefcase! So, what's inside a Breeze briefcase? Did that name inspire Tyler Breeze's name almost a decade later? Opportunistic! No! Really? It took Chris Jericho whiplash in the ladder off Christian's face for the referees to finally ring the bell to start this match? Why the near two minute pause before the bell was actually rung? Oh, look out, somebody's gonna get hurt! Well, thanks Captain Obvious for stating that somebody is gonna get hurt in a ladder match, and when a wrestler leaps onto his opponents outside the ring. <laughs> Shelton Benjamin never got hit by Kane and even ran forward just for the sole purpose of falling back down. I guess Shelton really likes falling down for no reason. No disqualifications, no count out. Oh my god, don't even start. <laughs> Holy shit! That ladder took a hell of a landing. That ladder's got rungs. Okay, I'm sorry. Turn in, come in! Chris Benoit is an idiot. Bet you guys thought all this time that the meaning behind calling a wrestler an idiot for locking in a submission in these type of matches was because they couldn't win that way. Well, here's the reveal. It's because you become prone and vulnerable to those type of assaults. You learn something new every day. It's every man for himself. <sighs> it's like open house at Home Depot. What? Alright, I'll remove us in. Trying to be a nice guy here ever since those guest narrators told me to have a heart and realize when certain things should get sin removers. Jericho looks like he's gonna make- That's another thing that bothers me about Money in the Bank ladder matches. Instead of making sure the hook is in reach, the wrestlers whack the bottom of the briefcase and cause it to swing away. Always gives me anxiety every time. Well that was pretty cool, no doubt about that. Ceiling cam. Uh, no. His leg is definitely broken. What in the hell just happened there? Tyson Tomko went sailing over the top rope well before Kane could ever clothesline him out of the ring. What the hell are you doing, you stupid dumbass? You had the briefcase almost unhooked and would have easily won the match before Kane could ever catch up to you. Kane's gonna. Someone forgot to put a caution wet floor sign in the ring. 
No! Come on! Why the hell are you complaining, JR? Edge didn't do anything to cheat in this ladder match. There is literally nothing controversial or unfair about this victory. Out of all the WWE commentators, I never thought I'd ever send JR for whining. The entire existence of this impromptu segment. Eugene's music doesn't play until he's more than halfway to the ring. Too late to start the music, whoever played it. Midgets are awesome! <laughs> this is... This is actually funny. That was an awesome quote. Do you have any idea why I'm angry? I don't know, but the answer to why I'm angry is because this segment is still going on. Show! What chance? Of prejudice and bigotry! If Muhammad Hassan is continually pausing in between words, then he shouldn't be getting upset for hearing the what chance. Pausing in between words is pretty much asking for it. That standing ovation just removed three sins from the counter for Hulk Hogan's appearance. That was fucking awesome. Although, it would have honestly been more appropriate if Hulk showed up as Hollywood Hulk Hogan, considering the tagline for this event is WrestleMania Goes Hollywood. Adam fucking Sandler. Legend. Killer. In 2005, Randy Orton being a legend killer was cool, but in 2018, if he once again referred to himself as a legend killer, he might be suicidal. I'd be removing a sin or two for this entrance had I not seen this exact same thing last year when Undertaker faced Kane. Also, the fact that none of the Drood's mouths are moving or even lip sync in the song playing doesn't help their case either. Now the Undertaker gliding on the floor is worth the sin remover. Much better. This match is literally titled Legend vs. Legend Killer Match. So, was that the same case for all the other matches Randy Orton had with legendary wrestlers? The youngest world heavyweight champion. That happened last year. Irrelevant to this match, Michael. Undertaker tries to here go, here we go. Here. I find it absolutely hilarious that Randy actually believed he could successfully pin The Undertaker by pushing him back to the ground. Taker is still fresh, you know. It's only been 50 seconds since the bell rung. Randy also believed his strategy of jumping over the Undertaker would work twice. Jesus, was Undertaker trying to legit crush Randy the way he landed on him from old school? That was honestly horrifying. I want to see the Undertaker win this thing. I agree, but you're a commentator, so what you personally hope for should not be mentioned. Gotta keep things neutral. He is on Raw guy. Oh, so you want Undertaker to win because Randy is on Raw? Gotcha. Still gotta do your job though. To become the youngest champion in Raw. Oh my god, that's the third or fourth time that Michael mentions Randy Orton being the youngest champion in WWE history. Enough already! The fuck just happened there? Spanking. Why would you do this? Referee knocked down at the crucial point in the match cliche. Been quite a while since I last said that. Uh, okay. Didn't know what happened right there either. Shit, I'm removing three sins for that epic choke slam counter into the RKO. I truthfully thought the streak was over at that point. The beast. Referring to The Undertaker as The Beast honestly doesn't click in my opinion. So, this women's title match exists all because Christy Hemme got to be a cover girl and Trish Stratus got passed up for it. So, Christy gets trained by Lita, coincidentally Trish's longtime rival. So, this is secretly Trish versus Lita again with Christy as a pawn on the board. The match begins, and Trish immediately lays down to allow Christy to pin her. Where's the strategy in that? Oh, see, that was absolutely uncalled for. uncalled for. Uncalled for? We're in the middle of a wrestling match. This stuff is known to happen. Uncalled for my ass. Essentially woman here. Copyright infringement. Christy now. Oh. Christy is a... Wait, how the fuck do I word this to a female getting kicked in the vagina? Shit, I guess I'll just add a sin and think about it later. On the outside of the I don't know what kind of pin that was, but it was definitely deserving of a sin. No way in hell Christy could beat Trish with something like that. Oh bullshit, Christy got the pin right there. Trish kicked out after the referee would have counted three. WrestleMania screw job. People are talking to me about some guy named Shawn Michaels. Ah, so a rivalry based entirely off jealousy. Okay, not bad, not bad. But if it comes to something that was nine years ago, then I send Kurt Angle for refusing to let the past die. In WWE history. They seriously played the start of Brock Lesnar's theme in a promo focusing on Kurt Angle? Brock's been gone for a year by this point. Why are we listing Kurt Angle's accomplishments during his entrance, but completely ignoring the accomplishments of Shawn Michaels? Dick move. Michaels, Hand dabbing. 
I guess Kurt is the inspiration for the dab. I suppose this qualifies as both a staring contest and a smiling contest. Huh, that's a first in the WWE sins. There's a you screwed Brett chant coming during an event that's neither Survivor Series or in Montreal. Hell, the Montreal Screwjob isn't even related to this match, so are the fans just bored or something? This referee's showing obvious favoritism to Kurt Angle by giving Shawn Michaels a fast count. This is a SmackDown vs. Raw match anyway, so I shouldn't really be surprised, but still. Shawn's shoulder is clearly off the ground, you stupid dumbass. Double sin. Quicker than a hiccup, got out of that ankle lock. Unless someone is capable of getting a hiccup for three seconds, I don't think Sean getting out of the ankle lock was quicker than a hiccup. Sean disassembles the SmackDown announce table and just stands around doing nothing for the next 10 seconds. Why the hesitation? Wrong. Sean's butt was what hit the ring post. His spine was nowhere near it. Kurt cops a feel. Would have removed a sin for that, but unfortunately, Sean lost his balance and basically fell on Kurt rather than jumped on him. Sean is addicted to Kurt's angles. No, no, yeah! oh my God! Ah, the table didn't break. Yeah, trying to literally destroy each other. Really? Both Kurt and Sean are trying to destroy each other in this match? I would have never guessed that, Jerry. He's gonna break his leg! He's gonna break his leg! Well, technically not his leg. Sean's ankle, yes. His entire leg, no. That awesome counter into the ankle lock was no doubt one of the best moments of this match. The quickness of Kurt Angle is always impressive. He's gotta do to beat Sha what was the point of Kurt pulling his straps back up if he was just going to yank them down again? That was honestly pointless and stupid. <sighs> Even in 2005, finishers didn't seem to exist as they are easily kicked out of like their average wrestling moves. And now Angle. Monologuing is a villain's greatest weakness, Kurt. The Fucking what? The referee stopped counting before Kurt ever kicked out of the pin. No, no, this match is over. Kurt lost. This is bullshit officiating. Look at that hideous position of Angle's ankle. That's Sean's ankle in the hideous position, not Kurt's. I will remove five cents for Sean's determination to not submit, even if he did succumb to the ankle lock in the end. Fighting to the very end by any means necessary. Heart of a true superstar. I will remove another sin for the return of Piper's Pit at WrestleMania. This is what you call an awesome moment. Who is the biggest rebel bullsh**? Rowdy Roddy Piper would have been great at CinemaSins 2 expansion. <laughs> Literal camera destruction. Thank you very much for having me, you little son of a bitch. No words could describe how epic that was. No, no, think about it a little longer. Yeah, let's have you think about what to say next a little longer. It's gonna piss off an almost nine-year-old boy watching this at home and make him hell-bent on becoming a sinner when he grows up. Arguing and slapping each other like little girls. Still a better accomplishment than your career in the WWE. Oh! Quit talking, get your ass in here! Carlito's not even talking, Roddy. In the words of the legendary CinemaSins, Vince McMahon said, Let's give Carlito an apple. It'll make him look even more like an asshole. That sin works even in the WWE. <laughs> that was, no pun intended, cool, but it's still copyright infringement. And yet another awesome moment. The entire existence of this sumo match at WrestleMania is putting five sins on the counter because, well, this is WrestleMania. I got no problem with sumo wrestling, but this is WrestleMania. <laughs> The Big Show is the one who lost this match, yet his theme is plain, and I couldn't find sins throughout the match itself. Doesn't necessarily mean it was good, but doesn't necessarily mean it was bad either. Sumo wrestling has its sins, which I'm yet to find, though I don't see myself going on a hunt for them. Shirt graffiti. It's one thing to rain money in the arena, but raining fake money with your face on it to troll people into thinking they're getting real money is what you call a dick move, and I love it! Oversized bling. WWE Championship on the line. We're not even 15 seconds into this match and already Michael Cole is stating the obvious. That's gotta be a record. And now for the rest of this pay-per-view event, we gotta see the ring and ringside area littered with confetti. They seriously couldn't get a cleanup crew in between the last two matches. Oh, there's a shoulder knocked down by the former NFL player. Why the hell would you think we even cared about the fact that JBL's a former NFL player? Style, he has a Smith mouth style. Hey now, you're an alpha. Hey, who the hell turned on that song? Was it seriously because Taz said Smash Mouth style? I swear, I vanquished all the guest narrators to dust when I snapped my fingers post WrestleMania 34 sins. I'm telling you, Cole, the way I see it is the beginning of this match. <laughs> well, thanks for being Captain Obvious, Taz, by saying, the way I see it, it's the beginning of this match. 
No shit, it's the beginning of this match. This is vintage John Cena just, just stomping away. That is clearly JBL who's stomping away, not John Cena. Get your facts right, Michael. Oh, JBL connecting a poke to John's eyes using the force. Oh, oh, a straight forearm. That move's called a freaking clothesline, Michael. Good lord, this is not looking good for Michael Cole. And again, when does it ever look good for him? The cover, it's, uh, John Cena. JBL somehow doesn't understand what the term rope break means. By the rough and, rugged, and with every count, I'm gonna raise my arms in the air as if I won this match for some reason. By the former college football. Definitely removing a sin for John's badass lineup, you son of a bitch. Whatever happened to this John Cena? Cena and the champion. Discount Randy Orton. Upon being lifted up for the FU, JBL didn't even try to get out of it. He just remained motionless. Not really a convincing way to see John win his first WWE Championship, in my opinion. Title cravings. Nikolai Volkov. Mean Gene Okerlund announced Nikolai Volkov about six seconds before Nikolai could even enter the arena. Being led to the ring here by Maria Kanellis. Michael Cole somehow knew that Cowboy Bob Bourne was being led to the ring by Maria Kanellis before either of them made their appearance. Psychic commentary. Man, the whole wow, JBL's money is still raining. Was it doing that for his entire match with John Cena? <laughs> Motorhead's performance takes 10 sins off the counter because holy fuck, this entrance for Triple H was super epic. The number one contender for the world heavyweight title. In case you're too stupid to think Hunter was somehow the number one contender to his own title. Jim Ross states that Dave Batista is 317 pounds, yet Howard Finkel announced that Dave was actually 310 pounds. So who's wrong here? Or are they both wrong? Referee checking wrestlers for weapons in one match, but not in any of the other matches, cliche. Still don't understand why. This match doesn't start for a full two minutes after Dave's music ends, and the ring introductions had already been made during the entrances too. The referees, are you two gonna fight or not face? Yeah, I'm definitely intimidating. See the way I slap my pecs? Ooh, now you're definitely scared of me. Batista powering out of the pedigree. Oh my gosh! I'd be amazed with Dave's strength had Hunter cooperated in time. But I guess not. Maybe next time. The confetti on the floor is still yet to be cleaned up. Ric Flair doesn't realize that the referee is completely looking in his direction and would make the sneak attack pointless. Unless, of course, he wants his match to end in a disqualification. The referee hasn't disqualified Hunter for putting his hands on him like he's supposed to. Do your job. How do you not know what a haberdashery is? A haberdashery is a men's retail shop that sells men's accessories such as wallets, hats, buttons, belts, ribbons, and zippers. Don't get frustrated, Triple H. They focused. Jerry Lawler's stupid cheerleading. See? Now that's a logical reason why Hunter would flip himself out of the ring like that. When his opponent literally throws him out. Removing a sin for one of the only times this flip out of the ring made sense. All the other times, he does it for no reason. How about instead of wasting time teasing the fans that you're about to hit the pedigree on Dave, you actually hit the pedigree on Dave? No. Ow, I headbutted my own hand. Jerry just referred to Dave as the referee by saying, Ref, ref, don't do that. Last I checked, Dave wasn't the referee of this world title match. Begging for mercy. Look at that, that's another point in this match where it should have ended in a disqualification. Because Ric Flair attacked Dave right in full view of the referee, who once again doesn't do shit. <laughs> this match sadly didn't deliver like I hoped it would, but I'll still throw a couple sins off for Dave winning his first world title in the main event of WrestleMania by knocking off his former mentor. Yeah, I'm finally listening to what that one guy said in the WrestleMania 34 sense. Five minutes of highlights after the show. 